In this lesson, we'll talk about applications of factoring. Let's look at some strategies of solving formulas for a specified variable. In example A, we have a formula that really represents the surface area of a box. So, A really stands for area, L for length, W for width, and H for height. We need to solve it for W. One of the strategies that may help us to know what to do is to highlight or write in a special color the variable that we are solving for. So focus on the variable and keep it in one place. In this case, the variable appears in two terms. The idea is to make sure that the W is in one place. How to do it? Well, first of all, get rid of the term that does not involve our variable. Let's move this term to the other side we'll get a minus 2LH equals 2LW plus 2HW. So now if we want to have W in one spot, we can use factoring strategy. Let's take this common factor W out of the bracket and what's left inside is 2L plus 2H. Let's copy the other side, a minus 2LH and finally, as you probably expect, we need to undo this multiplication by a bracket. Therefore, really divide the whole equation by this bracket. So we will end up with a minus 2LH over 2L plus 2H. So we solved for W. We have a single W on one side and some expression that does not involve W on the other side. Let's see in the next example. What kind of problems do we see here? Well, our variable t that we are solving for, it's not only in two places, but also at different levels, in the numerator and denominator. So, first of all, we need to bring this case to similar form as in example a. Our variable of interest should be at the same level. Okay, how can we do that? Well, by multiplying the denominator to the other side. So, we can write p times t equals t plus 1. Okay, so now our t appears in two terms. Well, in order to bring the t to one spot, similarly as before, by factoring, we need to have those two terms on one side of the equation. So let's bring the t to the left. We'll get p times t minus another t equals 1. And now let's take t outside of the bracket. So in the bracket we'll have p minus 1 equals 1. Final step, similarly as before, let's divide by this extra bracket, leaving t on one side and bringing the whole bracket to the denominator to the other side. That's the final answer. Let's look at example c. The question that we have here is very similar to example b. However, it's a bit more difficult, so let's try it. We're after capital E. Again, the E is in two places, and not only that, it is at different levels. So the first thing would be to multiply by the denominator to make sure that E is at the same level, at the numerator. So we start with x times n times E equals nr plus E. Well, maybe you can try to finish this question on your own. I'm sure you probably know what to do next. We actually should bring these two terms that involve e to one side of the equation. So, xn e minus e equals nr. And again, similar as before, we can pull e out of the bracket that consists of xn minus invisible 1 here. If we pull the e, we can't overlook this 1. Okay, equals nr. And the final step, similar as before, let's divide by the whole bracket. So what we do, we really undo this multiplication, change it into division on the other side. So we'll get nr over xn minus 1. Okay, so in all those questions we used the strategy of factoring the variable. Let's see some other applications. Here we have a word problem. Find two consecutive integers such that the difference of their squares is 15. So first of all we need to translate the sentence into algebraic equation. 
we refer to two consecutive integers. Well, if we think about consecutive integers, they can be represented by n for the first integer and the expression n plus 1 for the second integer. So we are going to refer to these expressions. OK, we need to find two consecutive integers such that the difference of their squares. So we are starting with the larger number n plus 1 square and we are subtracting the square of the smaller number because the difference must be positive 15. So that's why we know that the first number is larger. OK, that's our equation. Now what's left to do is just to solve it. In order to solve it, we need to raise to the square using perfect square formula. So we get n squared plus double the product 2n plus 1 minus n squared equals to 15. Well, as you see, our n squared terms cancel each other. And what's left is 2n. We may want to bring this 1 to the other side at once. So it's 15 minus 1, it will be 14. Therefore, n equals 14 divided by 2 is 7. OK, since n is 7, then the other number, n plus 1, is equal to 8. So we're ready to answer the question. Find two consecutive integers with this property, that the difference of squares is equal to 15. OK, let's give the answer. The two numbers are 7 and 8. And it's done. Here's another application problem. A rectangular flower bed is to be 3 meters longer than it is wide. The flower bed will have an area of 108 meters square. What will its dimensions be? Dimensions means the length and width. If we look at this picture, the width is already labeled by W, and the length, let's label it by L, is actually W plus 3 because of the information that the flower bed is 3 meters longer then it's wide. So, instead of length, we're going to use the expression w plus 3. Now, we also know that the area of this rectangle is 108. OK, let's recall what's the formula for area of a rectangle. Yes, it's length times width. So, length times width is equal to 108. But we have to work with just one variable, not two. Therefore, instead of length, we must use the expression w plus 3. So w plus 3 times the width w equals 108. Here's our equation in one variable. It's a quadratic equation and we know how to solve such equation. Well, let's multiply through the bracket. It will be w squared plus 3w. Let's move the number 108 to the left and equal it to 0. And now what we need to do is to factor and use zero factor property. OK, how do we factor? W, W, the product is negative, so the two numbers that we're looking for must differ by 3, and they would multiply to 108. So which two numbers multiply to 108? Maybe on this side, let's use factor 3 to figure out prime factorization for 108. That will be, for example, 2 times 54, and 54 splits into 2 times 27, and 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. OK, how to group those prime factors into such two groups that they will differ just by 3? Well, if we take 12 in one group and 9 in the other group, 12 and 9 differs by 3. OK, the larger number should be on positive side. So we take plus 12 and minus 9. And now everything agree. The product is negative 108 and the sum is positive 3. Great! Therefore, w from the first bracket is negative 12 or w from the second bracket could be 9. So formally, we have two possible solutions to this quadratic equation. However, we are talking about geometric situation. Therefore, our w must be positive. OK, so we have to exclude this possibility and we may say because of geometrical reason. Therefore, the only solution is w equals 9. OK, since the question calls for dimensions, we are obligated to give the length as well. So we can say length equals 
w plus 3, which is 9 plus 3, so it's 12. And now we're ready to give the formal answer. The dimensions of the flower bed are 9 by 12 meters. The last example shows us a picture frame. It's pretty standard question. Let's see how it goes. A picture frame measures 12 by 20 centimeters. So on the diagram we have width 12 and the length 20 centimeters. And 84 centimeters square of picture shows. That means the area of the picture itself without the frame is 84 centimeters square. Find the width of the frame. Okay, as on the diagram, let's width of the frame be called x. Obviously we assume that the frame is uniform around the picture, so the width of the frame, no matter where we measure, it's still the same, it's x. How can we create equation that will connect the information that we have, particularly the area of 84 centimeters square. This is the area of the rectangle. Okay, but the formula for area of a rectangle is length times width. Therefore, we need to figure out the expression that represents this length in terms of x. Well, that's the same as overall length of the picture with the frame, which is 20, and then we need to cut off those two pieces here and there. So we need to cut off 2 times x. Each piece is x, right? Therefore the expression for the length of the inner rectangle is 20 minus 2x. Similarly, the width of the inner rectangle will be the whole width, which is 12, minus the width of the frame taken twice, because from this side and from that side, right? Therefore, this expression is 12 minus 2x. Good. Now we're ready to write the equation for area of inner rectangle. That will be length times width equals 84 centimeters. Instead of length, we have expression 20 minus 2x. Instead of width, we have expression 12 minus 2x. Everything equals to 84. So, as soon as you are able to write the proper equation, I would say 80% of the question is done. Okay, how could we solve this equation in the most efficient way? We have lots of numbers that are actually divisible by 2. So we may think about pulling 2 from this bracket and another 2 from that bracket. That would look like this. 2 times bracket 10 minus x. It's just a little bit simpler to multiply later times and pull the other two from the second bracket, again we'll have 6 minus x equals 84. Why I'm showing this step? Because I wish to divide the whole equation by 4, just to make sure that the future calculations will be easier. So if I divide this side by 4, it's the same as cancelling these two twos. And that side by 4, that gives us 21. Okay, on the left hand side we have two brackets, 10 minus x times 6 minus x. Obviously in the next step we need to multiply it and bring the 21 to the left because we wish to have 0 on the right hand side. Okay, let's multiply through foiling process. So 10 times 6 is 60, then 10 times negative x, negative 10x, and in a second negative 6x. Finally plus x squared and bring the 21 over, so we have negative 21 equals 0. Now what we need to do is to arrange the polynomial in decreasing order of exponents and collect like terms in the meantime. So let's start with x squared. Now the linear terms gives us negative 16x. And finally 60 minus 21 is plus 39 equals 0. Okay, let's try to factor it now. Maybe you can try it on your own x and x, the product 39, the sum negative 16. So the two numbers are both negative and that will be 13 and 3 because 13 plus 3 is 16 and it multiplies to 39. Therefore our x could be 13 or 3. Which one makes sense? Well, since x is the width of the frame and the whole picture with two width, 
is barely 12 inches wide, then obviously x equals 13 is way too large. You may want to ask yourself how large the x can be. Well, if this frame will be as wide as possible, still keeping the overall width to be 12 centimeters, that means that this width can't go farther than half away, which is barely 6 centimeters. So 13 centimeters is definitely too large. We have to exclude it because of geometry of this problem. So we can say that because of geometry of the problem. Okay, therefore the only solution is x equals 3. The frame is 3 centimeters wide. So we are ready to give the final answer. The width of the frame is 3 centimeters. Okay, we've done pretty big question here.